Hello guys, welcome back to Gracie TV. So this is a case that I want to cover for a long time and if you guys have been interested in crime cases, you guys have probably heard of Casey Anthony or Kaylee Anthony case. This case was literally next to OJ Simpson's. This is the second biggest case that was ever covered on the media. It is so mysterious. There's so many bizarre. I literally watched hours and hours of videos and research about this and unfortunately I cannot get down to every single detail in my video otherwise it's going to be like a six hour video but there is a youtuber who has done an amazing job of touching every single detail about this case so you guys should go check it out after watching this video because i'm going to be pointing out the important details in this case but can you appreciate my look today you guys i'm feeling myself today it felt very punky yes this is an extension it's not real hair but it looks so real cross earrings and got my cool little hand accessories that i found probably gonna go out like this today like oh with the mask on it Ooh, it's even cuter can we do a little mask talk i don't know what mask you guys use but i found the best mask on the market first of all with the worst mask that i personally do not like one day i forgot a mask so i had to quickly get one and i got this from some kind of drugstore and it is so horrible. Early when you put this on, it smooshes my face. I can't breathe in these like double layered cotton masks. And then these surgical masks are great to work out in because you could actually breathe in them. So I actually really like surgical masks, but apparently they don't actually give you a lot of protection. Best mask that I found is this one that I bought from CVS. It's called the Lido Copper Fiber Mask. This is actually made in Korea. There is adjustable ear ones right here and it's not not like cotton that's like separating like this it's actually pressed so you could actually breathe really big so there's a lot of breathing room here this one lasts 50 washes this is lined with copper electromagnetic wave prevention and copper is supposed to be really good for the human body it apparently helps with killing bacteria and viruses on contact so these fiber masks are super awesome so let's talk about this crazy case about Casey Anthony's and the death of Kaylee Anthony Casey Anthony was a 22 year old young mother to Kaylee Anthony Anthony, of course, who was born in 2005 and she would actually be about 15 years old today, a beautiful young lady. But a really unfortunate thing happened back in July 15th of 2008 when Casey's mother, Cindy Anthony, called 911 about her missing granddaughter, Kaylee. Casey has told her mother that day that Kaylee has been missing for 31 days and this was the first time that she has told her parents and authorities about it and this is red flag number one she hasn't told anyone reported that her daughter was missing for 31 days this is over a month uh, your daughter admitted that your the baby is where it said it took her a month ago that my daughter's been looking for. I told you my daughter was missing for a month. I just found her today, but I can't find my granddaughter. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today, and it smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car. Okay, what is the three-year-old's name? Do you mind if I speak with her? Thank you. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi. Well, can, you, can you tell me what's going on a little bit? I'm sorry? Can you tell me a little bit what's going on? My daughter's been missing for the last 31 days. And you know who has her? I know who has her. I've tried to contact her. I actually received a phone call today now from a number that is no longer in service. I did get to speak to my daughter for about a moment, about a minute. And you last saw her a month ago? 31 days. It's been 31 days. Who has her? Do you have, do you have a name? Her name is Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez. Who is that? Babysitter? She's, she's been my nanny for about a year and a half, almost two years. And why, why are you calling now? Why didn't you call 31 days ago? I've been looking for her and have gone through other resources to try to find her, which is Stupid. Do you guys hear something strange about this 911 call? Cindy Anthony, who is the grandmother of Kaylee, is the one who's very frantic. She is panicking just like anyone would in this situation. But it's Casey Anthony only asking what the operator is asking her instead of giving more information, being curious about what to do next, how to find her daughter. She claims that her nanny is named Zanny, aka Zaneda Fernandez Gonzalez, has kidnapped Kaylee and 
and she's been trying to find her for the last 31 days. To understand Casey and the situation, let's go back a little bit before this has happened to understand what's going on. Before this 911 call, it was said that Casey was trying to kind of avoid her family. And every time Cindy and George Anthony would call Casey to find out about Kaylee, where she is, they wanted to meet her, she would always have an excuse, an explanation of why they could not talk to Kaylee. Casey would always tell them Kaylee is totally fine, she's with the nanny, she's with her friends, she's at a theme park. She always had an explanation where Kaylee was and this went over for a month. So finally how Casey was found by the parents was that apparently her car, Casey's car has been towed. It was just sitting on the streets for a couple weeks I believe and the car is owned by George Anthony, Casey's father. Now Casey needed the car to go to work because she said she had work every single day and she was supposedly working at Universal Studios. Now when George Anthony went to go and get this car, he opened the door and he said that there was a very distinct smell that came from this car and they specifically described it as a decomposing body smell. And George Anthony actually used to be a deputy, so I would figure at least he would know the smell of decomposing body versus just something that just smells bad. Now inside the car, they did find the car seat, some stuff that belonged to Casey and Kaylee. They opened the trunk and all that was there was garbage that's been rotting for a couple weeks. And this was in July, so it was in the hot sun. So maybe this was where the smell was from, the garbage being out in the hot sun. Just keep that in mind. Cindy Anthony finally got a hold of one of Casey's friends, Amy, who told her that she was at her then boyfriend's house named Tony. And they found Casey smoking marijuana inside Tony's house. And that's how Casey was finally found after being gone for a month. When Cindy found Casey, she said she seems to be very agitated and that she didn't want to go home. And Casey felt like her parents were just kind of bugging her rather than, you know, trying to help her. Now, during questioning, the police asked her why she didn't report her daughter missing for the last last 31 days. She replied that she wanted to find her on her own and was scared if she called the police, Zanny would do something to Kaylee. So that was her explanation. And this is the fascinating part about Casey Anthony's because she is known to be someone that just constantly lies and lies and lies and makes up these fantasies. She claims that she met her nanny, Zanny, through a friend named Jeffrey Hopkins. She said Jeffrey Hopkins was a co-worker at Universal and Jeffrey Hopkins had a son and Kaylee and their son would be watched by Zanny together. When was the last time you spoke with him? About a week and a half ago. Do you know a telephone number for him? I can find a number for him. I don't know a number offhand. No, I do not. So you met Zanida through Jeffrey Hopkins? I did. And yeah. his son Zach Hopkins, I guess, Zanida used to watch over Zach? Yes. And when did she start watching over your child? It's been within the last year and a half, two years that she started watching Kaylee. How would you normally do the exchange with your child and Zanaya? Would you drop the child off? Would she meet you somewhere? I would usually drop her off for yes. a few months. We would go over to Jeff's house. He lived over in Avalon Park. And you would go to Jeff's house why? To drop off Kaylee. That's where Zanaya would go to watch both of the kids. Okay. It was in a nice centralized area. He had a decent sized house. It was good room for the two of them. She claims that the only person she told about Kaylee being missing was to Jeffrey and a coworker named Juliet Lewis. They all worked at Universal Studios, apparently. Now later she came to find out that actually Juliet Lewis was someone that never existed. So Casey made up this person for whatever reason. Not only that there were these fantasy characters, made up characters, she would just go into details about these people and their lives when they didn't exist in the first place. And this is also another pattern of Casey that when the police would ask them for phone numbers or contact of these people that Casey was talking about, she all of a sudden did not have her phone number saying that, you know, she changed her SIM card. It's just really, really interesting how she was able to make up these extra details as if I'm not sure if she practiced this before, if this comes up right, you know, right then and there on the spot. I'm not sure how she does it. The honest to God's truth of everything that I've said I do not know where she is. The last person that I saw her with is Zenaida. She's the last person that I've seen my daughter with. And um, see, here, here's the problem. I, I think Sergeant Allen's, Sergeant Allen's trying to get to this is that we, we, we know that's not the truth. We know, it listen, listen, absolutely listen, listen. Is. We, we know that, that that's not true. That can't be the truth. Because if that were the truth, everything you would have told us would have been on the money. The addresses you would have taken us would have been 
on the money. Everything else would have, would have matched. It's as if she hides her anxiety with being so chill and calm, and it's just oddly incredible to watch how she's able to do this. During the interrogation, she of course had to give the addresses of the people that she was talking about. So she would actually go with the police to these different addresses of Zenaida, of the co-worker she was talking about, and she actually led the police to many different fake addresses that just didn't exist. One of the biggest lie was that she worked at Universal Studios. So during the interrogation, the police took her to studios, the Universal Studios, saying, hey, take us to where you work. The police did some digging before this, and they actually knew that she did not work there. So she was lying to her parents, the police, and everyone around her friends. So she would get up in the morning, tell her parents she's going to work, use the car, leave, and they come back home. And she did this for the last two years, you guys. She pretended to go to work when she didn't have a job at all. Now she did work at Universal Studios a couple years ago, just for a little while. She wasn't an event coordinator. They actually found out she was just someone that worked behind a kiosk booth of one of the rides. So anyway, when they got to the Universal Studios, Casey was telling security, hey, I work here. My name is Casey Anthony's. Can you look me up? Let us in. Security would go through the name list and they could not find Casey Anthony's, of course, because she didn't work there. Apparently, Casey Anthony was kind of getting agitated almost like kind of bickering with the security guard saying yes I do work here look me up maybe there's something wrong with the list so you can see how far she's willing to go in order to keep up with these lies now eventually the police was able to tell the security guard to let them in for investigation they went in Casey Anthony and the police and they were walking around trying to find the office where she worked at after walking around Universal Studios she turned around apparently chuckled let out a laugh and told the police she actually doesn't work there. And you know that everything you told me is a lie, correct? Not everything that I've told you. Okay, uh, pretty much everything that you've told me, including where Kaylee is right now. That I still, I don't know where she is. Sure you do. And here, here's, I absolutely listen, do let me, not let me, know where she let me, is. Let me explain something. As you hear this police interrogation tape, one of the things that stuck out to me is she says, one truth, the truth is I haven't seen my daughter. And now I'm gonna insert a little bit of my personal experience when it comes to people who lie a lot. So I have a very personal experience, very close experience with someone that was a really bad compulsive liar. And this person was involved in my life heavily when it came to work a couple years ago. They're very good at manipulating the truth. So it's not like they say 100% lies, they mix like 1% of truth in there. They kind of use that as an excuse thinking that what they say is the truth. Because they're mixing 1% of truth and 99% of other lies, they, I think it gives them some kind of relief and a belief that they are telling the truth and it's okay to lie a little bit because it is mixed with the truth. Now, where did this lying behavior of Casey Anthony start? Let's go back a little bit to life before Kaylee. So it was known that Casey Anthony would lie even before this whole incident. And they say she got away with a lot of things that normal people usually wouldn't because of her parents that were kind of enabling her. The earliest lying behavior of Casey Anthony started in high school since she was 18 years old when she skipped an entire semester of school to hang out with her older boyfriend and led her parents and friends to believe that she was graduating and her parents and grandparents even came to the graduation only to find out that she wasn't graduating. She made up this excuse to her parents that apparently the school was at fault and that the school had the time schedule mixed up and that that's why she accidentally skipped the classes. Apparently her family still threw her a graduation party to her friends and family. So technically this shows you that her parents never put accountability towards her and almost kind of praised her for her bad actions or bad lies, which allows Casey Anthony to believe that it is okay to be deceptive because she's going to get what she wants at the end of the day anyway. She was pregnant at age 19 carrying Kaylee. She gained weight and looked pregnant, but Casey actually told her family and her friends that she wasn't pregnant, although a lot of people did think that she was pregnant. But apparently, her mother, Cindy Anthony, believed her that she wasn't pregnant. Of course, when later Casey couldn't hide her pregnancy anymore, that's when she came and told her parents and they said that Casey was just excited to have a child. Another interesting thing is we actually do not know the father of Kaylee Anthony because Casey Anthony claimed multiple people were the father. She once claimed that the father of Kaylee was a man that she's been dating, but he died in a car crash. And another claim was that her then boyfriend that she 
met in January of 2008, was the father of Kaylee Anthony, who was born in August. She apparently told Jesse that he was the father, and she knew that the time frame kind of didn't make sense, but whenever he brought this up, apparently Casey would give some kind of excuses, would kind of get agitated. She was upset that he was questioning her about this, so he actually believed that he was the father. But later on, DNA evidence proved that Jesse, her then boyfriend, was actually not the father of Kaylee. So we don't know till this day who actually the father is. There's up to three other men that could be potentially Kaylee's father, but they all died in a car crash. So I found that very interesting. Of course, like I stated before, Casey Anthony's actually led her parents to believe and her friends to believe that she had a job at Universal for two years. But within those two years, she never had a job. She was actually jobless and wasn't working at all. Of course, if you're jobless, eventually you're gonna run out of money. So she was known to also steal from her parents, little money here and there. And she also stole from one of her close friends back then, Amy, and she stole up to $4,000. So let's fast forward to what happened during the 31 days that Kaylee was missing. During the days when Kaylee was missing for 31 days, you could see in these Facebook photos that, that Casey was attending parties, attending a lot of her boyfriend's parties, getting tattoos that said Bella Vita, which means beautiful life in Italian. Which this part is the reason why a lot of people are suspecting Casey because how can you be out partying and seem like nothing was wrong when your daughter has been missing, when you know she's missing, when you know that she's been taken by this natural named to Sadie. Her friends later would testify that they noticed nothing strange about Casey's behavior during these 31 days, not even mentioned that Kaylee was missing that we know of. The neighbor also confessed two days after Kaylee was last seen alive. Casey Anthony's borrowed a shovel from him. He didn't notice any odd behaviors after Casey returned the shovel. Now, because Casey has lied to the police during the interrogation, she was arrested that day. This recording tape is very, very, very strange, you guys. Casey? Mom. Hey, sweetie. Well, I just saw your nice little cameo on TV. You don't know what my involvement is in stuff? Casey? Mom. What? No. I don't know what your involvement is, sweetheart. You're not telling me where she's at. Because I don't know where she's at. Are you kidding me? Casey, don't waste your call. Stay no. Scream and holler at waste me. Waste my call sitting in, oh, the, the jail? Whose fault is... Bunks are? Whose fault is you sitting in the jail? Are you blaming me that you're sitting in the jail? Not Blame yourself fault. for telling lies. You see the family and friends being concerned about Kaylee, but Casey responds in a very different way. Do me a favor, get my brother back because I need Tony's number. Okay, um... Is there anything I can do for you? I'm sitting in jail. There's nothing anybody can do right now. Oh, well, I'm just trying to be... Oh, I know you are, honey. I, I absolutely know that you are, and I appreciate everything that you're trying to do, but I'm, I'd like to call Tony. Does Tony have anything to do with Kaylee? No, Tony has nothing to do with Kaylee. Oh, so I, wh why do you want to talk to him? Because he's, probably don't want to tell me. he's my boyfriend, and I want to actually try to sit and talk to him because I didn't get a chance to talk to him earlier because I got arrested on whim today because they're blaming me for stuff that I never would do that I didn't do okay. She even says that Tony, her boyfriend, has nothing to do with Kaylee's disappearance, but she still wants to talk to him. It's just really odd how she's not asking how the search is going about Kaylee, what they're doing, have they found anything, have they gotten contact with Zanny, like what is going on with her daughter. Now two weeks later, she finally got to talk to her parents over a video, and you could see Casey is a little bit more uplifted in her mood. Let's point some things out here about this interview. One of the interesting thing is, when Cindy Anthony says that Kaylee's face is going to be on People's Magazine, which has millions of viewers every single month, Casey's respond is, and this is a quote from the YouTube video, JCS, as if she responds of that of a lost cause. You don't realize that the whole United States is looking for our Kaylee. I know that, Mom. Her cover's gonna be on People Magazine in a few days. Okay. One thing that I personally saw, and this is just my opinion, you could agree or disagree with me. Cindy Anthony asks her, are we going to be able to find her, you think? Casey replies, I hope we can. Now, in my opinion, hope is a very interesting word to use in this kind of situation. It's as of knowing that there's a great chance of you not achieving it. In this situation, I personally think that you would respond with, yes, we have to find her. Yes, we are going to find her. We cannot lose hope. 
we have to do this. Lastly, we see her talking about Zanita, the nanny, and she's giving detailed information about her. When later, it was proven that actually Zanny, Zanita never existed. Casey Anthony never had a nanny. It's almost very scary how she's able to do this. Again, coming up with detailed information. On August 21st, a bounty hunter, a TV star, Leonard Padilla, paid for Casey's bail in hopes that they will lead him to find Kaylee. I believe this is what bounty hunters kind of do where they pay for someone's bail in hopes that they will solve this case and when they do, they're able to recoup that money back and also make profit from it. I don't know really exactly how it works, but apparently that's just kind of basic of how it works. So when he went to talk to Casey and the family that day when she was released on bail, she stuck with her same story that she doesn't know what happened, that Sandy took her. It's a story that pretty much no one believed at this point. Leonard, the bounty hunter, actually called Casey later a narcissist and promiscuous and that he wasted his money and his time bailing out for Casey. There was also a big search team that came from Texas that spent about $100,000 to find Kaylee and unfortunately they didn't find anything yet. Now finally, there was a man named Roy Cronker who was a meter reader and he called the police to report a suspicious trash bag back in August. This place was near Anthony's home. It was kind of like a swampy area and he believed that he saw something but unfortunately the police never came by and did a search so he called once again actually he called several times and eventually the police came and did a search but they said they didn't find anything he once again called the police again in December and this time the police did recover a trash bag there and there was also some bones found and later on the autopsies actually showed that this was indeed Kaylee Anthony there was also duct tape with hair that was found that seems to be attached to the skull and the death was later presumed undetermined. The body was so decomposed that they could not rule any death. They really don't know what actually happened to Kaylee. Additional to the duct tapes and the bones, they found a blanket that was proven to be part of bedding at her grandparents' house. Let's go into the most important evidences that was presented at the court. And basically, the prosecutors came with a story saying that they claimed that Casey was the one responsible for Kaylee's passing because she wanted to throw her old life away and wanted to party and start a new life. So the first evidence was a strand of hair was recovered from Chuck of Casey's car, which was microscopically similar to hair taken from Kaylee's hairbrush. The strand showed root banding in which hair roots form a dark band after death which was constant with hair from a dead body. Next evidence was an air sampling that they did in Casey's car, which, which indicated a decomposition based on five key compounds of chemicals found. It also smelled strongly of human decomposition. Chloroform was also indicated in this air test. We're also gonna get into defense because there was a lot of controversy about this air sample that they did. There was also a German Shepherd cadaver dog that was called to sniff Casey's car and Anthony's home. The dogs indicated something inside Casey's car and in the backyard of the Anthony's home, but, but when they digged into this place that the dog was sniffing, they didn't find anything. The defense later claimed that the cadaver dogs that they used were unqualified. Another big evidence was that someone inside the Anthony's home searched for foolproof suffocation before Kaylee went missing. There's a lot of computer tests that they've done here. They don't know who actually searched for this. Evidence showed that the grandparents were at work and it had to be only Casey Anthony who was at home searching for this. But again, there's a lot of things that the defense was trying to prove that it was not Casey. Jeff Hopkins, the person that supposedly worked with Casey and had a son, well, he confessed that he didn't even know Casey and that he did not have a son. He also hasn't worked at Universal in the last six years, so it was impossible that he worked during the time that Casey claimed that they did. There was a lot of talk about Casey's lawyer, who was Jose Baez. That's another big talk on its own, but anyway, he came off a very strong since the beginning. The defense the defense actually claimed that the duct tape found in Kaylee before the body decomposed was an opinion that they actually cannot prove that the duct tape was there before or after. They did point out the possibility that someone could have set this up. Someone possibly could have set up the duct tape, put the body there later in order to cover up for the case, whatever the reason could be. And the second autopsy that was done by the defense team, they claimed that there was no indication of it being a murder, aka also because the body was so 
decomposed that they cannot rule it as anything. There was also a lot of questionable parts that the defense pointed out about Roy Cronker, the person that found Kaylee's body. The search team and the police team apparently did the search there and they haven't found anything previously and it was odd that Roy Cronker found the body. So the defense was just questioning that Roy Cronker possibly could have put Kaylee's body there. Roy Cronker filed a defamation lawsuit against Casey Anthony in 2011, claiming her team had framed him to be the murderer, keeping her body for months, then disposing it, later calling the police and claiming the reward for finding Kaylee. Of course, there's no evidence of Roy being involved in this, and he said he was doing what a normal citizen should do by reporting anything suspicious, but later was being pointed fingers at. Now, the biggest shocker wasn't really the evidence. It was what the lawyer, Jose Baez, claimed about what really happened to Kaylee. Casey claims that Kaylee drowned in the family pool accidentally back in June 16th, 2008. Apparently, George Anthony covered it up and told Casey to not worry about it. And that's the reason why Casey just kind of went, went about about her life, partied and didn't worry about it because her father said it was okay. They also claimed that the father, George Anthony made an advancement toward her, meaning abused her when she was a young child. That's why she was so used to hiding her pain by lying and making up fantasy stories. And this was one of the reasons of why Casey was out partying because she just had to hide her pain. They also claimed that Zanny was a made up character in order for Casey to cope with the pain. And the Anthony's actually claimed, yes, that it was true that there was no door lock so Kaylee could go in and out of the house freely. So when no one was looking, Kaylee accidentally drowned in the pool because of this. One important information I do have to say is that during this whole trial, George Anthony actually tried to commit suicide and he even left a suicide note. He claims that he was just being harassed, he lost his job and due to Kaylee passing away and pretty much losing his daughter Casey as well, he just got into this deep depression. Now the defense used this saying that this was evidence that George Anthony was guilty of covering up for Kaylee's death. You guys let me know what you guys think about the suicide note, the behavior of George Anthony. I personally believe that the suicide note was not an evidence that he was guilty that he let Kaylee drown in the pool. Now was there any positive things people said about Casey? Jesse, Casey's ex, said he could not believe Casey would hurt Kaylee and that the person he knew then was not the same person now. Ultimately, Casey Anthony was acquitted of murder, found not guilty of murdering her daughter. The reason why they acquitted her was because that there was no evidence that pointed that she murdered her daughter. This is true that there was no hard proof physical evidence that linked Casey to murdering her daughter. And one of the things that also helped was that Casey was known to be a good mother by the friends and family. There was no indication of abuse or any odd patterns that happened between Casey and Kaylee before for the death. So here's a possible theory of what a lot of people believe happened to Kaylee. This is just a theory just to remind you guys. A lot of people believe that because Casey wanted to go party and Kaylee kind of became a baggage at one point to her. So one day she decided to use Xanax, either Xanax or chloroform. Of course, we don't know. Chloroform could actually be used as anesthetic if used in a large quantity. It's a very toxic for obviously little kids. So they believe that Kaylee somehow died from overdose and Casey tried to cover it up. Ultimately, whatever happened, a lot of people believe that it could have been an accidental thing that has happened and that Casey did not actually mean to do this. But again, everything is theory. We don't know what actually happened. And unfortunately, because the body was so decomposed, they could not find any trace of drugs inside Kaylee. So Casey was a free person. And this is the latest interview that we know of Casey Anthony talking about Kaylee. When the interviewer asked Casey what she really believes has happened to Kaylee, I'm still not even certain as I stand here today about what happened. So your parents had her? My dad did. Next thing you know, she's I, missing, and, right? How did it play? I did what I was told. I don't remember too much of what happened. To okay. your understanding, how did she die? I don't know. You don't know? Something about drowning, possibly? Everyone else has their theories. I don't know. Casey says, I don't know. 
I don't know what happened to her. She seems totally not curious about what happened to Kaylee, which is the reason why a lot of people suspect Casey Anthony to have something to do with this. I mean, maybe she has a personality of not really caring about what happens. She just wants to move on with her life. But I think we could all read the room that if someone else is accountable for my child's death, I would do everything I can to fight for it and find out who did it. Of course, I cannot get into every single detail about this case, but if you guys want to know more, I'll leave a link down below of really great videos that other YouTubers did so you guys could watch these hours of documentaries about this. I worked on this video for a very long time, you guys, so if you could hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys for watching.